Hello there, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I am very privileged, and uh, it's my pleasure to be part of these sessions. And why I'm saying that each time is because the only reason that I could think of is heaven is rejoicing, looking at what we are doing here on earth. Because you see, the majority of the world they are busy with some or other things that are not useful for God. That's not useful for them. <laughs> you see people partying. You people. You see people getting that weekend get together. That too in this pandemic situation. Yeah, and <clears throat> you will see them always um, being involved in one or other activities and. they don't understand that doesn't take them anywhere closer to god and first of all they don't understand that they need to be closer to god and that's why they have not focused enough to walk in the spirit right walking in the spirit is not an art that you can inculcate but it is given from above as a gift as a blessing right and you get that and every one of us have that gift but only thing is you don't use that gift and you you therefore what happens is you um, you end up backsliding you end up um getting into all sorts of deceptions and um over a period of time what happens is you even lose your focus focus on yourself focus on your christian walks and christian doctrines and all that right and that's why it's dangerous to always keep checking on what you are involved what are your priorities what are your beliefs and who is accompanying you who is your companion all of these things are very important why because if you don't understand these you are not going to understand the doctrines of god and the doctrines of god the doctrines of the bible i'm telling you this the word of god are the only only one uh, are, i mean is the only thing that could get you closer to god and minus that in life you cannot get closer to god minus this word of god imagine the word of god is missing imagine you don't read bible then what can take you closer to god a oh, holy spirit will help me i had been explaining you right from the beginning of this series or any session holy spirit will be helpless if you are not grounded and rooted in the word of god yeah you have any doubts in that the holy spirit is only going to remind you and bring to your remembrance of the scriptures that you had learned and Jesus had taught you those personally right i want you to turn your bible and we will do that i keep reminding you this this is not the first time i'm telling this but for some reasons i feel that i need to keep emphasizing this because it's a very serious affair that christians don't focus on this word of god they don't spend enough time in the presence of god john 14:26 but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name jesus says this personally to you and me he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that i had said to you he will teach you all things means it's not that he is going to magically pull up the bible and emphasize you oh did you read this verse like how you are father and mother for example if you are a teenager or your pastor at church is going to emphasize you hey did you read bible and all that no he is not going to tell that but he will teach you on what you have learned and what you have not understood or what you are not practicing right we all read bible but we don't follow the doctrines or we are not the doers of the word he is going to offer that help to you and me to lead you by the side of god and help you understand these doctrines and help you walk closer to god there is nothing else the holy spirit is obliged to do or the holy spirit had been sent to do are you understanding so he will teach you means many people think oh he is going to bring me that ma- get me that magical verse holy spirit tell me which verse holy spirit is not going to answer such nasty questions right or he is not going to uh, you know respond to such foolish or stupid questions that's why you need to understand the bible the doctrines very well the ideologies the basic foundational principles and th- these are the things which are not being taught in the christendom and these are the things which left me in the dark and therefore i don't want my beloved brothers and sisters to be left in the dark 
and I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming Christendom. I'm not blaming any congregation. I'm not blaming any pastors. Why? Because it's not their job. I keep supporting the functions of the church are very limited, right? In all my messages, I've told the functions of the church are very limited <clears throat> and they are, there are many other um, tasks to accomplish to support the believers funeral ceremony marriage ceremony events and this and that and programs and yeah they do their best to get you get you that starter course they show you the path they teach you the basics but they cannot get you into the details if they were to do that then what is your job why are you living on earth what is the reason for your existence tell me I ask this question to myself. I'm not asking this to you. Okay. I'm no one to ask you such a question. Don't ever think I was rude and arrogant. I ask such questions to myself. Hey, what is your job, man? Not now. At the age of 18, I asked this question. When I had been very new to the charismatics and Pentecost, I, I, quit, I quit Catholicism and uh, walked out of the Catholic congregation. Not that I hate them, but I don't see God, uh, the word of God there. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything that I read in the Bible is existing there, but I'm not against them. I, I love them. I pray for them, but I just cannot be there. So when I walked into some of the Pentecost churches and all that, I see they were no different in the sense. They also have a pattern of worship, but they, they repeat. It's mechanical. It's quite static. It's a static line, right? Static line in that uh, ECG box, which keeps gauging your heartbeat and the frequency the patients in ICU, they will be plugged with these machines which will be detecting the heartbeat. If there is a static line, the person is no more. He's dead. So there were a lot of dead churches that I had been part of and I was very, very disappointed because why? This is not the reason I walked out of Catholic congregation and I was very, very angry at these people. And I was very angry at myself. Did I make the wrong decision? Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me from the scriptures which I had read, be grounded and rooted in the word of God is not for others, it's for you. Yeah, it is your job, it is your task to press yourself hard, to ask my help to teach you when you go through the scriptures and you will be grounded and rooted. Therefore, you will be grounded and rooted in the word of God. Therefore, you will get light on the scriptures that you're learning, not without you putting that effort, not without you seeking my help. You're all with me. Don't blame others. Stop blaming others. Stop, stop finger pointing your pastor, church, this, that. I was like you. I was no different from you, right? And that's why I'm sharing this personal testimony. And at a very early age, at the age of 19, if I'm not wrong, I started reading the Bible, rereading the Bible, <clears throat> meditating the Bible, and asking the Holy Spirit. I kept him very busy. The Holy Spirit is fond of me for one reason is, I keep him busy. <laughs> and that's called his fellowship, right? And Holy Spirit loves that. One thing that excites the Holy Spirit is not your long prayers, lengthy prayers, and uh, fastings, too many fastings. And these are all good, okay? By the way, don't misunderstand me. These are all very good. If you're involved in any of these, very nice. Please continue to do this and God will bless you. Um, I'm not against it. But then, these are not the things which will excite the holy spirit but when you ask him to explain that's why i read that beautiful verse um, what uh, 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 john 14 26 that that is the function of the holy spirit you know what somebody is asking you to explain the function of the holy spirit why holy spirit is given what is his job many people will answer many 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 or many people will give many funny answers uh, holy spirit is our helper what helper he's not going to come as a maid and clean your toilet or he is not like your wife correct some husbands they ill treat their wives yeah my brothers listen to me that's not the that's not the way to behave to your wife yeah she is your helper but she is your beloved wife give her that respect yeah and don't call holy spirit in the same language holy spirit come here i'm driving the car you help me okay some people instruct and demand the Holy Spirit to do this and that. He's not your cleaner or he's not your wife or somebody like that whom you can cheaply treat. He's God, right? Show that respect, show that reverence and he's, he's, he's sovereign and he's, uh, he's God. Nothing but the Spirit of God has come in living and, 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 and is living inside us. So show that respect whenever you get into your prayer room, whenever you Come in the name of Jesus. Whenever you talk to the Holy Spirit, 
yeah you ask his help and all that nothing wrong you ask his help but then ask in the most rightful way and ask in the meaningful way don't ask him saying that you know do this for me do that for me he will teach you from the scriptures and he will teach you to claim the promises of the scriptures why because the scriptures are nothing but life yeah they do not they do not look at the ink printed on some paper no they are like command you are like commanding the angels to come and help you you are commanding the lord the father to respond to your petitions but by all due diligence but all due respect with all due uh, honor that you give to god according to his will you understand huh? as you 55 you take and read the word of god doesn't return back to you void but it accomplishes the purpose and understand the limitations of holy spirit the functions of the holy spirit he is going to help you to be reminded and he will bring bring you to the bring bring those scriptures to your remembrance the teachings the laws the commands the instructions and the power and the might in the scriptures and the word of god and he will help you to claim these verses the promises and speak against the situations speak against the spiritual or the demonic weapons that are formed against you speak against the wiles of the devil speak against your sicknesses speak against your illness fight out the good fight of faith for which you need scriptures because why bible says in ephesians 6 the armor of god is nothing but the word of god it is your spiritual weapon using which you could fight the battle six weapons are given i keep telling this ephesians 6 you take and read the later half right the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation gospel of peace uh, all these things are given to you God, yeah the shield of faith all these are given to you as spiritual weapons and he will teach you how to use the weapons from the scriptures that is the function of the holy spirit first of all understand his role right don't ask him for magical words don't ask him oh i'm getting up please help me you got to use the scriptures and command the guardian angels to come and help you in the name of the lord and savior jesus immediately angels will come to your rescue immediately the angels will come and protect you right and you can proclaim healing angels don't give healing right but jesus blood and his precious stripes gives you the healing which is already kept in reservation yeah granted already 2000 years ago on the cross now who's not claiming this you why are you sick because you are not claiming and this is exactly what the holy spirit will reference and he will tell you hey why are you struggling in your sickness man claim it and sometimes he will also teach you hey you have claimed enough stop there <laughs> that's the beauty of working with the holy spirit you know when you have fellowship with him you will love him because he knows what is the right thing to do sometimes you overreact he will say hey slow down sometimes you don't react he will say hey react sometimes he will say you you want to talk he'll say stay quiet sometimes you want to stay quiet he'll say open your mouth and talk it will be wonderful to understand the leading and he will reference it from the scriptures he will also justify why you should talk in this situation because he will remind you from the promises hey promise of god tells the scriptures are telling this the law is speaking like this the commandment of god is like this if you don't speak now this commandment don't work and this brother will be um deceived if you don't go and tell him now that what he's doing is not right at the same time he will tell if you go and tell him now he is going to become your enemy so shut up because why scriptures are telling that you know be at peace with anybody for example i'll give you second thessalonians chapter 3 um do not count anybody as your enemy if they are not listening to you but please gently ignore them and he will tell you from that scripture why you should ignore you may have guilt conscious no i should have told him uh, how many 770 times god asked me to forgive but uh, i am not uh, Uh, going and you know telling him the truth and all that god asked you to forgive not to go and tell uh, the same thing 770 times 490 times you don't have to go and tell that brother or sister hey what you are doing is wrong jesus is not uh, happy with you you don't have to tell you don't have to preach 770 times but you have to forgive people 770 times you see what misinterpretations people go through this is where the holy spirit will play a beautiful role being your architect yeah he will design your life he will help you from the scriptures what is a single point of reference for you and the holy spirit tell me 
very well very well done good the holy word of god good without the holy word of god you cannot be a companion to holy spirit holy spirit cannot be your friend are you all with me so far what unites both of you word of god and the name of jesus and without the name of jesus without the word of god the holy spirit can never play a role to admonish you to help you to guide you to uh, take you by the side of god are you all with me so far as usual we want to give that initial 10 to 15 minutes for a generic concept and these are all not generic concepts right these are all connected to what we are going through and a warm welcome to the series yeah where we are dealing through this subject of um genealogy and evolution of the christian congregation and we have been uh, talking through various uh, sessions already and and these sessions are very important for one reason these are going to bring that light in your life and if you want to be that person who walks in that light be the children of light right bible says that very clearly you want to be the children of light you want to be a person who would always want to stay connected with the word of god stay um in the presence of god then you got to be understanding the foundational principles of the christian congregation or the christian by religion by tradition that's up to you to define right i don't i don't want to put my words in your mouth you want to define with any title define but do it in the right way right definitions sorry the titles can be different but the definition is one and the same the foundational principles are one and the same that is where exactly where i want you to focus i mean not i the holy spirit wants us all of us to focus and that's why we are r- r- dealing with these kind of sessions and i hope these are all making sense to you right now in the initial sessions we started i'm just doing a quick recap as always we spoke 45 years before jesus was born and 337 years after jesus was born until the death of king constantine all the events we have described clearly then we started to analyze the life of jesus um and then we we had a beautiful study from the life of jesus like he was brought up in the jewish culture jewish jewish tradition and what is judaism all about is also something that we also spoke very nicely right and judaism is not to be taken as um, a traditional aspect i mean traditional tas- aspect alone is what i'm trying to say but you got to always understand that judaism is also having certain principles which jesus beautifully followed right jesus always followed that judaism tradition and Juda- judaism as a culture why because he was he wants to show that respect he wants to show that um um more than respect he wants to show that he is an obedient child of god and he is somebody who wants to always be walking in obedience that's the law of obedience which jesus introduces to people like you and me correct or not right and as long as you walk as the children of light you also will walk as the children of obedience and uh, that's a very important principle that we all learned from the life of jesus because he fulfilled all the old testament laws old testament commandments old covenant promises and then only god spoke to the mankind from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased because he had been living his life in truth and in spirit and now i am taking him to the next level and then again god speaks in the mount sinai when jesus met with elijah and moses that this is my beloved son hey listen to him which means what you don't have to listen to anyone else just listen to my son and that's what exactly we are discussing right what jesus spoke what were his doctrines what were the foundational principles are the ones which we had been discussing in detail because why i want to respect what the father spoke 2000 years ago in front of john peter and um, james correct no and these guys never understood what is this listening to jesus listening to jesus means just follow his teachings don't look to your left or to the right just give that respect to those commandments that law right those promises those teachings and the more you 
get into that mode of respecting Jesus, respecting his command, respecting his preachings, respecting his teachings, the more you walk in his presence, the more you walk in light. Simple. And don't you want to be one of those? And that's why we kicked off this series to teach you those foundational principles on, um, based on Jesus' teachings. And then, we, because why? Jesus lived his life that way, right? He was an obedient child. And law of obedience is something that which you need to read from the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And law of disobedience you need to read. A lot of curses will come and cling to your life. Things will go haywire in your life. You will be driven berserk by the punch of demons. <clears throat> and you do not know how to set things right. And it's very easy to set things right. Only thing you got to just pay attention to the word of God. You got to be a child of obedience. And if you are walking in obedience, you are already, you are already the children of light. You don't have to do anything different. You don't have to do anything phenomenal. These are the basic principles where Christendom had not paid enough attention. And that's why the situation of Christians are something that you see today, right? Living in failure, living in depression, living in this, living in that, living in sickness, living in curse, living in bondage, living in poverty. Poverty stricken, some people think it is a blessing. There are a lot of um, spiritual churches, they think, oh, the rich young ruler, no, because he was rich, Jesus said, oh, he cannot enter into heaven. Therefore, no one can be rich in our church. Rich people are not allowed. There are churches like that. Bunch of idiots. Jesus never said that, right? He said that, do not love the richness. Do not love the riches more than you love God. That's exactly what the rich young ruler was doing. But if the rich young ruler was to sell the properties and keep one, some portion of money for himself and uh, his family and for his generations also, I don't think Jesus is going to abuse him. And he can always go to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, you know what? I've given three-fourths of my property to everyone, man. One-fourth I need because for my inheritances, I cannot beg for bread, right? But I will continue to follow you. Jesus would have hugged him and kissed him and come, my beloved friend. And you know what? He could have become another Paul Apostle or something like that. Jesus would have given him a very, very prominent position for being obedient. What a chance that rich young ruler missed, no? He never came back to God. Perhaps today he is in the place of torment for not being obedient, not paying attention to the voice of God. And that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you also. You don't pay attention to the voice of God. I don't pay attention to the voice of God. We will become like that rich young ruler. And another thing is, you pay attention to the voice of the demons. That's why I'm giving you all these doctrines and how people get into misinterpretations. Don't you think it's a big deception to hate riches? You need riches, right? To feed your family, to pay their school fees and to pay off your credit card bills and this and that. You want to beg on the streets? Such people, I've always seen them always living their life at the mercy of others and they call that is the calling of God, brother. You shouldn't be having anything. Yeah, if people give something, I will eat. Yeah, whatever they feed, I will swallow. Wherever the spirit leads, I will follow. What principle is this? Nonsense. These are all your doctrines and doctrines. these doctrines are from the bottomless pit. I'm sorry, I have to tell you this honestly. Okay, now, we had been dealing through these teachings of Jesus and we are, we are stuck with the fifth teaching. The f first four teachings I've already spoken. Love your God, love your neighbor, forgive others, love your enemies, right? And now we are in the fifth doctrine or the fifth teaching, the foundational principle of Jesus' teaching based on which you can, any of his teachings, no, you can connect to either of these principles, yeah, we are dealing with the principles on which Jesus spoke every parable, every instruction, every commandment, every law. And with Paul Apostle, he had done a phenomenal job. Holy Spirit did a phenomenal job writing 14 epistles, including Hebrews. All these things you will be able to connect with one or other teachings. Sorry, one or other principles. That's why I am spending a lot of time on the foundational principles based on which Jesus taught, Jesus preached. Very important, no? You agree or not? And you don't find such sessions anywhere. Uh, go, please go and find any, anywhere. YouTube, this, this tube, that tube. You go any tube and you find out, you will not find any of this. I haven't found or I haven't heard anybody preaching and teaching to me from the word of God very clearly, vividly. At least in this concept. Other concepts, yes, there are very good preachers who speak from the book of Revelation, who talk about triple six, who talk about spirit of Antichrist, who talk about all oh, battle of Armageddon, 
who speak about white throne judgment all this preachings are there and the seven letters written to seven churches we have also done such preaching no jesus is coming soon and seven letters it is also part of our channel those are all like popular teachings and common teachings but these kind of teachings are the foundationers foundation for your spiritual walk you want to stay closer to god then you definitely need to be part of such teachings and why this is very important for you in your life is these are the only things which can take you closer to the presence of god right while you live on earth not after you pass away if you are not closer to the presence of god on earth in a million years you are not going to get to paradise you will not see the presence of god in eternal life in eternity correct or not okay warm welcome again and uh, we are dealing with the fifth teaching that is ask god to forgive your sins and that introduces another law called as law of forgiveness where is it in bible law of forgiveness you won't find anywhere in bible that is why the holy spirit is using a person like me to describe much of the doctrines associated to this law of forgiveness and the first law and the first uh, um, what i say the first uh, principle under this law of forgiveness is confessions and again in this confessions there are a lot of principles which we have already described right and in the, in the last two sessions this is our third session only on this concept of law of forgiveness and it is associated to the teaching the the, the principle the foundational principle in the teaching of jesus that is ask god seek god for forgiveness and there is a mannerism there is a method right that's a process there is a protocol that you and i need to follow to ask for god's forgiveness there are many other things you will have to do before you could even seek for forgiveness and number one thing is confession and on confessions i had spent enough time from the book of john sorry not john 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 to 10 last two sessions i have covered that enough many of the principles i gave you right when is the right time to repent instantaneously what to repent of i gave you those explanations with lot of practical teachings and illustrations you will have to go through it and uh, in continuation to this study on the law of forgiveness we will move on with other scriptures which also gives us various other explanations and it's very very important for us to understand these explanations uh, more clearly more transparently turn your bible with me to james chapter 5 verse 16 right this is another um what to say the extended doctrine of confessions only this is no different from confessions um but then first half of the confession is the rules associated the principles associated the mannerisms and the when you go to get into the <clears throat> prayer room for conf- con- confessions do not rewind the past and don't exaggerate don't add or decrement all this principles we have given you very clearly which is very important but it doesn't end there yeah the pattern of confession is extended to the second half or maybe there is third half also we will see as we meditate on the scriptures these are all encompassed within this law of forgiveness why this law of forgiveness is very important unless god forgives you you cannot forgive others why because you will continue to live your life in sin you got to first of all go and settle your accounts with god and the only pattern the only method to settle the accounts with god is through confessions and repentance and that introduces reconciliation we spoke all of that if you don't understand reconciliation uh, please listen to body mind spirit and soul series i have explained in uh, what is it 10 or 15 hours i had spent from second corinthians chapter 5 where paul beautifully explained on this concept of reconciliation with god yeah the later half of second corinthians 5 you can read okay let's come back to this the extended concept the extended principle of confession is nothing but something like this galatians sorry james 5:16 james 5:16 confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another right now i don't want to get into james 5:16 before i read 13 14 and 15 yeah is anyone among you suffering james 5:13 i start from there is anyone among you suffering paul puts a question right in front of you suffering means what many people suffer in multiple ways no 
Oh, no big deal, brother. Suffering, we all understand. We suffer in health conditions. See, I am suffering with back sprain for <laughs> for the last few days, and it's quite funny. Um, I told you, right? I'm not able to sit for too long because the sprain is really taunting me, and I'm asking God. Uh, yeah, for for healing, and he's healing me beautifully. I'm recovering, but the recovery process is very very slow. So what I'm doing is now I'm lying down and preaching, and God understands this, right? Uh, oh, brother, can you lie down and preach? Brother, don't be so stupid with your own doctrines, right? Don't be so carried away with your oh, this is not part of our tradition. We don't lie down and preach. You are lying down and preaching the word of God in the midst of your sickness. Heaven honors you. Heaven respects you. You are lying down and talking to God from the scriptures, claiming your healing and praying for the world and praying for all the poverty-stricken people and all that in the midst of your sickness. Heaven respects you. Don't you think so? That's why I'm telling you: don't carry, don't be carried away with your traditional principles and traditional doctrines. You need to always check with your scripture and check with the Word of God. Yeah, day and night meditate in the Word of God. Day and night, can you sit and always meditate? No, you have to lie down and meditate. You have to walk and meditate. You have to travel and meditate. You have to, all sometimes you have to meditate in the middle of your work also. But don't read Bible in the middle of your work. That's not the right thing to do. But then meditating from the Word of God is always attached to a situation and a circumstance or a personal life and all that. So there is no principle, hard and fast rule. Okay, coming back to the suffering. All of us go through sufferings in life. Sufferings are of different forms, right? People suffer in multiple ways, and major of majority of the sufferings happens in the form of physical sickness, physical disease, and uh, ailment, and bedridden people. Very very sad situation, right? And other form of suffering is people losing their near and dear ones. For example, pandemic. There is a new study which says that 45 lakh or 45. Or what I say, 450,000 people. Not more. Than, no, no, no. That's a that's a wrong number. 45 lakhs is what I can tell, right? People have died, but what they had been showing today is like four lakh people are dead or something like that. It's ten times more. The government has released a statement. I think so. That's what I heard. I stopped reading newspaper, but that's what I heard. you many people lost their near ones dear ones and a couple of my family close family members i have lost i mean family relatives i mean to say not very close relatives one of my beloved uncle i lost and i'm still not have overcome when i think of it see my tears already tears run down my cheeks i'm not able to take this easily and suffering happens in the form of physical sickness physical disease and also through emotions and tragic incidents job losses split in family confusions in family quarrels in family disputes in family children are disobedient and uh, you know your neighbor is such an irritating guy or your neighbor is a rascal probably all the time throwing tantrums at you or throwing all the garbage into your compound something right keeps happening sufferings have got its own form and sufferings are nothing but which is something that has been reserved especially for christians ask me why don't misunderstand this right ask me why sufferings are kept in reservation especially for believers in christ to test the flavors of the fruit of the spirit what is that flavor there are nine flavors joy peace faith love your love will be put to test god will bring a challenging neighbor your patience will be put to test god will bring a bring you a rebellious husband huh your tolerance will be long suffering will be put to test god will bring you a very challenging mother in law or a daughter in law you all understand now very clearly no when we explain with relations people get that 10000 watt bulb shining on their brains correct no this is exactly the reason why the children of god are allowed to go through sufferings why because you will be the children of light as a example role model and conduct in speech and love and faith and purity i keep reminding you this verse 1 timothy 4:12 and you won't be able to do this without god allowing these sufferings these situations and i can promise you these sufferings are not lifelong but then lifelong it will be periodic sometimes it will be there some seasons it won't be there you understand in its time and its seasons there is a season to weep there is a season to be sorrowful there is a season to rejoice there is a season to be joyful there is a season to laugh 
Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to, 5, 1 to 8, you take and read. So never ever assume these are going to be forever permanent. Ah, you are a Christian, ah, fine. You have to be suffering lifelong. Who said that? Bible doesn't say that. I am telling this. One more reference I will give you. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Your afflictions are only for a mere moment. And they are like passing clouds. Passing clouds is from me, not from scriptures. I am just adding more flavor to what I am explaining. Right? They are going to pass away. One fine day you will just get up. Or maybe the next day itself. God allows certain temptations only for a hour or only for a day or something, some, some temptations for a decade. Right? For Unless you get the output, get the result eh? on the suffering which God permits, the sooner you react, the sooner you bounce back, the sooner you learn, the sooner you practice, the sooner you become the doer of the word, the sooner you become the practitioner of the promises of God, the temptation vanishes. If the temptations are delaying in your life, if the sufferings are prolonging in your life, the reason is not God, the reason is not the scripture, the reason is not even the demons. The reason is you. The reason is me. right? It is our attitude. It is our belief system. It is our spiritual values. It is our spiritual doctrines. It is our spiritual system which has not been kept in check which has not been kept in order. You have not organized it. You have not re revisited it. You have not checked on your principles. And that's why these sessions are very, very helpful. And that's why you see in life, the suffering prolongs, prolongs, continues, continues, continues. Why? Because God is expecting something of you. And God is not going to take that out because why? His love is steadfast, Bible says. He's not a compromiser of his love. He is loving you so much because he wants you to change. Or in other words, he wants you to change and that's why he's loving you so much. And he's not going to take off the temptation. He's not going to remove this sickness from your body. He's not going to change your wife's attitude. He's not going to make your mother-in-law a little sober and feeble. She's going to behave like a demon. I'm not saying mother-in-laws are demons. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong and pull me into another trouble or argument. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people who get into these kind of unnecessary arguments and disputes having not understood the concept of suffering. Are you all with me so far? The concept of suffering is not only reserved for Christians, by the way. A lot of unbelievers too go through a lot of sufferings. That's totally different. That's because the demons are ruling their lives and their sufferings are completely different from what we go through. We go through sufferings. Therefore, we become a role model. We become an example. We become the children of light. Yeah, We don't compromise on our character. We don't comp compromise on our holy deeds. We don't compromise on our spiritual lives and spiritual journey. And each time you overcome these challenges in the midst of your sufferings, you are going to be blessed with certain gifts. You are going to be blessed with certain prosperity, materialistic or it may be even spirituality, spiritual prosperity. God is, God is the rewarder of faith, Bible says in Hebrews 11.6. And each time you overcome the temptations, each time you defeat the Satan, you are going to be rewarded. And those who shall endure the temptation in the midst of their sufferings, they are going to be rewarded with the crown of life. Eternal life is kept in store for you. All right, sorry, I'm deviating a little bit. I'm already getting into the concept of suffering. Now, I'm coming to the point, right? You will be very surprised why I'm spending little time on suffering is if I were to read verse number, what, uh, James 3.15, you won't understand anything, but 13, 14 will add more flavor to verse number 15 and 16. Uh, so we will now proceed with where we left. Is there anyone among you who is suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs, sing psalms or songs. So, Paul is blessing us or leaving us with two choices and both are very good choices, right? You have suffering in your life, you pray about it from the scriptures and God is going to deliver you. And you are very cheerful to not immediately look for some pub and dance clubs and go and dance over there with girls, right? Walk into the presence of God and thank him for what he had done in your life and celebrate with your family in God's way. Celebrate in God's way, right? Don't celebrate in devil's way. 
yeah only this night brother i'm very very happy not able to control yeah let me get into this pub and have only one pig of alcohol or only one smoke very happy the devils the demons will come and capture you and god will leave you simple why am i telling all this you will understand in a moment now let's move on galatians sorry james chapter 5 verse 14 <clears throat> is anyone among you who are sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord this is quite common if there are no elders in the church or if there are no elders in the family and you are the elder yourself and you are sick you can't call for another elder that's why i gave you those references that in the name of jesus claim the scriptures as a 53 5 by his stripes i'm healed in the midst of suffering i'm telling you jesus carried my suffering iniquities diseases and sicknesses i'm healed in his holy name i need not suffer matthew 8 17 psalm 32 in my in the midst of my sickness when i cried out to the lord in tears he heard me and healed me health and healing is restored back to me yeah jeremiah 33 6 30 17 all references you know do you know or not right first peter 2 24 by the stripes of my lord jesus i'm healed he was bruised for me he carried my chastisement on him therefore i need not suffer by his stripes i'm healed i say 53 5 all these verses if you're an elder you need not be elder beloved you can be a teenager also you don't run to this elder and that elder i'm telling you that's not a good practice forget it this is written for those people who are not grounded and rooted in the word of god who doesn't know scriptures so why you should run after this uncle and that auntie tell me you have your beautiful eyes you beautiful beautiful brains and beautiful time that god has given you why don't you read the scriptures and claim and heaven is going to respond man heavens have responded to me many many times i've gone through so many problems in my body and not not dreadful diseases but there are a lot of sicknesses that comes and goes right every human being goes through that go through that no don't look at me as a sick bird i'm <laughs> i'm not trying to say that right if there is a human body there is going to be weakness in your body why because the carnal flesh is full of sinful deeds the adamic sin is still reigning in us and therefore these sins are going to bring that kind of sicknesses and diseases but you can overcome god is going to heal you the stripes of jesus is going to heal you but you need to claim the scriptures all right now i am going to verse number 16 now you will understand this with that we will close today no sorry verse number 15 verse number 15 and then verse number 16 and with that we will close our session is my time is already up oh my god and no and and the prayer of faith will save the sick see again the sickness means there are two types of sicknesses not only physical sickness spiritual disease you are spiritually inflicted you know that huh? oh what are my inflictions i will give you a big list of inflictions second timothy 3 1 to 9 mark 7 21 to 23 and galatians 5 17 to 21 take and read bible describes at least 40 to 45 spiritual sicknesses one sickness i will tell you lovers of themselves you're spiritually sick blasphemers spiritually sick sensual behavior meaning compromiser of faith compromiser of spiritual quality spiritually sick you don't need you don't need healing from that sickness now everybody is winking up oh my god what is this all of you are thinking that oh all these days i'm talking only about physical sickness absolutely no i think yes and no right yes physical sickness is true but not only physical sickness but there is also a spiritual sickness you are inflicted spiritually you got to pray over it from the scriptures analyzing your character introspecting your behavior seeking the help of the holy spirit to remind you from the scriptures to overcome and he is the rewarder of faith bible says okay now and the prayer of the faith will save the sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven now what is this connection now only i'm coming into the topic you know what the sins that commit in your that you commit in your life for the wages of sin is death romans 6 23 right and the sin reigns in us but it doesn't reign in us anymore if you are under the grace of jesus if you are in the new covenant if you are a born again believer in christ all things are passed away i am a new creation second corinthians 5 17 
then sin cannot reign in you sin cannot dominate you but if you have not understood the scriptures and you are not changing your lifestyle behavioral pattern and all these things then what happens is the scriptures won't work in your body in your health or in your spiritual life the sickness will continue to reign in you because why sin is reigning in you you have not overcome the sins you have not confessed that's why we spoke a lot about confessions you're not following the principles of confessions then sin is not going to be taken off of your life and as long as the sins are going to prevail in your life sickness continues to batter you or battle with you that's why i will read it again for you second half of james 3:15 and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven he will be forgiven not before you confess not before you ask for forgiveness but there is assurance what bible says my bible gives you assurance is done deal done deal you are going to be forgiven no problem god has no problem in forgiving you any number of times but don't repeat sins sir that's not repentance that's regret bible talks about repentance not regret regret is like tomorrow morning you will continue the same sin repentance you will put an end today tonight now forever and again if you don't repent no the forgiveness is not going to be holistic god can te- check your attitude very clearly right before he forgives he is not going to forgive you if you are going to play games with him regretting you got to be holistic when you ask god to forgive you now i will read 16 and we will close with that okay confess your trespasses to one another what is this man new doctrine this is another principle under the line of confession confession doesn't only limit you opening your mouth and confessing your sins to god but you got to open your mouth giving away all your pride giving away all your egos <clears throat> giving away all your prestige giving away all your status etc whoever it may be the brother or sister they may not be great in their position or they may may not be great in their possessions they don't have materialistic property etc but you might have sinned against them you might have spoken bad of them you might have sledged them you might have hurt them lower your standard lower your standard go to their home and have a cup of coffee and tell them i am really sorry of what i have done forgive me and you need to do that wholeheartedly god will check your attitude right is he can definitely scan he has a big scanning machine in his eyes he can scan whether it is of truthfulness or your acting you're a hypocrite go have a cup of coffee and tell them i'm really sorry i did not mean to do this but it all happened circumstantial i'm telling you they will be filled with tears in their eyes because looking at the humility or maybe they were angry they will yell at you you have to bear with them why because you created a, such a big um, shame to them in front of public and now you deserve to get all the yellings from them but then when you are quietly sitting there their heart will be touched or oh, this man is a great man in the society he walked down to our home and we are yelling at him their heart will be touched and they will say okay fine let's leave it there that's called as reconciliation that's called as you know confessing the sins to one another it's also part of the confessions i'm telling you you confess to god and not to men against whom you sinned you sinned against your brother you hurt their feelings you stole in their property you ditched them you betrayed them go first confess it to men before you confess it to god yeah oh nobody understands so that's why i'm referring the bible galatians 5 so again i say galatians james 5 16 confess your trespasses to one another man and pray for one another wow now confessing the sin is the one who sinned against it brother he is going to confess now who is going to pray the brother who had received these confessions from the other brother this brother is going to pray for that brother oh brother it's okay leave it we are all brothers in christ come on he is going to give him a tight hug and probably a holy kiss and then he is going to say come do not feel so bad okay do not feel so sorry do not rewind the tape i have whole hearted forgiven you i was hurt i am very honest with you but no more hurt in me come let's pray in the name of jesus you got to <clears throat> pray for that brother who sinned against you and who have come humbling himself sorry in humility he had come to your home and he had reconciled with you you pray for him asking god to bless him and you are not going to judge him anymore you got to pray and therefore what happens you are united in one spirit <clears throat> one accord 
and you are telling God we are the members of the same body and we are all equal and we are not different we are not superior to each other or we are not inferior to each other we are equal and you are going to pray oh what a fellowship don't you think so earth will be like heaven christians will be like angels you we will all walk like angels in the paradise sorry um, sorry in the city of god you know that right we won't be like human beings we will be like angels we'll be walking in the spirit and truth but you can have that experience here why are you waiting for that that, that place and that moment of time do you understand the power of confession sir do you understand the law of forgiveness sir tell me who who taught you like this maybe people might have taught you by the law of forgiveness is something which everybody will have to understand very clearly beloved because why that's the key for your spiritual success and spiritual victory and with it we will close that you may be healed you want healing from your sickness with it i will close okay you want healing from your sickness physical sickness spiritual disease whatever it may be bible says god forgives your iniquities and heals your sicknesses and diseases psalm 133 that applies to you also beloved when you forgive others when you pray over others when people have come in uh, what to say in the in the <clears throat> Uh, with the, with that attitude of reconciling with you with attitude of being unified don't want enmity anymore let us not be having hatred let's not fight over each other therefore i am humbling and surrendering i'm sorry you don't jump on the mountain top and say that you know i am right you are wrong no you also humble yourself and say okay brother let's pray and we pray in the name of jesus what happens is i will tell you you will be experiencing tremendous healing in your body your physical sicknesses will depart your spiritual diseases will leave you the demons will flee away from your life why because the law of forgiveness is at work in you beloved the law of forgiveness is at work in your body in your heart in your spirit in your soul and you are a transformed person you are a renewed person you don't want to experience this okay then don't understand the law of forgiveness pretend as if you have not understood enjoy your grudge enjoy your hatred enjoy your quarrels enjoy your disputes enjoy your everything right then you're not a child of god but if you want to today change your let your life be transformed this is your chance eyes closed and heads bowed on heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship we appreciate your gratitude we appreciate your explanations oh lord thank you for talking to us so vividly in jesus name we pray amen God bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist and share it with your friends and relatives i'll meet you soon with the next session amen